the closest star system to the solar system is Proxima Centauri. And we've known for a couple of years that it probably has one planet, but just in the last couple of weeks, astronomers have confirmed that not only does it have the one planet, but it has a second, two planets around the closest star to the sun, and one of them's in the habitable zone. Astronomers have discovered thousands of exoplanets and still need to confirm thousands more. And over the coming decades, we'll probably learn of millions of planets orbiting stars we've never heard of. And that's why it's reassuring to know that astronomers are learning a tremendous amount about the closest star system to our own, Proxima Centauri. In fact, we now know of two planets orbiting the Red Dwarf Star, one of which is in the habitable zone. The Sun is the closest star to the Earth, obviously, but after that, the next closest is Proxima Centauri, just 4.2 light years away from Earth. It's part of the Alpha Centauri system, which contains three stars, a binary pair of sun-like stars and a third red dwarf star. Because of its wide orbit, Proxima Centauri happens to be closest to the solar system right now. In 2016, astronomers discovered evidence that Proxima Centauri has a planet, now named Proxima Centauri b. And this planet joined the ranks of confirmed planets just a few days ago. And just a few months ago, astronomers found evidence of a second planet named Proxima Centauri c, and this planet has also been confirmed. Most of the planets we know of have been discovered using the transit method, where astronomers study the light from a distant star and watch how it flickers as a planet passes directly in front of it. Unfortunately, the planets around Proxima Centauri don't line up so nicely, and they needed other methods to find them. As a planet orbits a star, it pulls it back and forth with its gravity. This causes the spectrum of the starlight to change slightly towards the blue or red ends of the spectrum. With enough measurements, it's possible to detect planets even if they're not passing directly in front of the star from our perspective. This is the radial velocity method. This is incredibly difficult to do, but it's slightly easier to do with dwarf stars because their mass is lower and the gravitational influence from the planet is more detectable. However, red dwarf stars are highly variable with powerful solar flares. The actual surface of the star can heave up and down like a stormy ocean sending false velocity signals. The first planet, Proxima Centauri b, was discovered using this radial velocity method, but the evidence provided just a hint that the planet was there. This time, however, astronomers made detailed observations using the world's most powerful observatory, the Very Large Telescope in Chile. Using the Espresso instrument to study the starlight in high resolution, they were able to confirm the existence of the planet without a doubt. Furthermore, they were able to confirm the planet's mass to be about 20% more massive than the Earth, orbiting Proxima Centauri within the star's habitable zone. This means that it's in the range where liquid water could exist on the surface of the planet. Of course, we need to put in a few caveats here. The actual presence of liquid water on the surface of a planet depends on its atmospheric density. Both Mars and Venus are theoretically located within the Sun's habitable zone, and you wouldn't want to visit either of them to go surfing. The other issue is that Proxima Centauri itself is a flare star with constant stellar winds and devastating X-ray flares. Proxima Centauri b orbits the star at just 0.04 astronomical units, which is about a tenth the distance from the Sun to Mercury. In other words, you've got a planet much closer to the star that's much nastier than our own Sun, and it would need a powerful magnetosphere to protect its atmosphere from being stripped away and blown off into space. Furthermore, the planet is probably tidally locked, permanently showing only one face to the star. This isn't a total disaster though, as it looks like these tidally locked worlds can have enough ocean and atmospheric circulation to keep temperatures on the day side reasonable for life, like a steamy jungle where the sun never sets. Clearly, we need better observations and search for the water itself. In fact, by studying the planets around Proxima Centauri, we'll get a better handle on the chances of life forming on red dwarfs, which are common across the Milky Way. First planet confirmed. But what about the second planet? I'll get to that in a second, but first I'd like to thank Hadi Zulfangari, Martin Gygax, Samuel Dupree, 
Jim Irwin, and the rest of our 853 patrons for their generous support. Want our videos early with no ads? Join our community at patreon.com slash universe today. As I said, it's been an exciting time to be studying Proxima Centauri, since astronomers have discovered not one, but two planets orbiting the star. And the journey to find this second planet is pretty cool. Back in mid-January 2020, a team of astronomers published preliminary data that said that they might have found a second planet orbiting Proxima Centauri. They estimated that it was around six times more massive than the Earth and took almost 2,000 days to orbit around the star at a distance of about 1.5 astronomical units. This would be a dramatically different planet and not habitable. But it was a tantalizing hint and not a confirmation, but it took the hard work of astronomer Fritz Benedict using older data from the Hubble Space Telescope to actually get all the details. Dr. Benedict had made intensive studies of Proxima Centauri back in 1999 using Hubble's fine guidance sensors. Normally, these are used to point the space telescope accurately at a target for long periods of time, but they can also be used for astrometry calculating the positions and motions of stars in relation to us. He used Hubble sensors to watch Proxima Centauri and see if there were any planets tugging on it with their gravity, shifting its trajectory slightly. This is the same technique that ESA's Gaia mission will be using to potentially find tens of thousands of planets in the coming years. In his original research, Benedict looked for planets that took up to 1000 days to orbit Proxima Centauri, and he didn't see any. So he shelved the data and went on with other projects. But with this newest announcement that there could be a planet with a 2000 day orbit, he went back through his data and the answer was there all along. He found the signal for a planet that takes 1,907 days to orbit the star. At the same time, astronomers using the Very Large Telescope in Chile used another instrument called Sphere to actually take pictures of the planet at multiple points in its orbit. Although they did see an object in their images, the picture was confusing, unusually large and diffuse. But with the Hubble data confirming its mass and orbit, they got the confirmation that they were indeed looking at a planet. It might be surrounded by a cloud of dust, but an even more interesting idea is that it's surrounded by a huge set of rings, and that explains its shape. Three separate data points combined together to tell us there's a planet with seven times the mass of the Earth orbiting Proxima Centauri every 1,907 days. And it might even have rings. Amazing. So here we are in the middle of 2020, firm in the knowledge that there are not one, but two planets orbiting Proxima Centauri, the closest star outside the solar system. And not only that, but one of these planets are orbiting within the star's habitable zone. I really hope interstellar mission concepts like Breakthrough Starshot can get going soon. I really want to see close up pictures of these worlds. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Here are the names of the patrons who support us at the $10 level and more. Want to see your name here? Support the work we do? Go to patreon.com slash universe today. Once a week, I gather up all my space news into a single email newsletter and send it out. It's got pictures, brief highlights about the story, and links you can find out more. Go to universetoday.com slash newsletter to sign up. And did you know that all of my videos are also available in handy audio podcast format so that you can have the latest episodes as well as special bonus material like interviews with me show up on your audio device. Go to universetoday.com slash audio or search for Universe Today on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And I'll put a link in the show notes. As new telescopes come online, the search for life is becoming a big priority. But how will you know when you found it? We've done a whole video on biosignatures, which define how astronomers will know they found evidence of life on another planet. And you can watch that video now.